What's going on guys? So another week in the book with the weekly rotation and this was a lot of blue fragrances, some things that I've smelled for the first time, a new release, uh, a polo blue flanker that I've worn for the first time, uh, just a bunch of really good stuff, some personal favorites of mine, a lot of freshness, a lot of mass appeal, high compliment factor DNAs, just some really good stuff this particular week and uh, something a little a little bit more on the unique side that I haven't worn quite some time towards the end of the week, but it's week number 140 in the weekly rotation, so stay tuned. Starting off on Sunday, making yet another appearance in the weekly rotation. I've just been falling in love with this fragrance all over again. We're talking about Dior Sauvage Parfum, my personal favorite rendition of Dior Sauvage that gets no love, at least not from what I see. I love this stuff. So happy to have a big 200 milliliter bottle. This is going to last me long, long time. I don't see myself pulling it out the rotation anytime soon. This has kind of been my just random reach type of fragrance where at least once a week I just if I don't know exactly what I want to wear I just grab this I've been leaving it on the rotation table it's a smokier darker more evening appropriate cooler weather version in some ways of the original though it works just fine here in the summer I've been wearing it in the summer this is year-round signature scent worthy stuff kind of a a smoother and more refined take on Sauvage. It's not a big Ambroxan bomb. Ambroxan's not in the notes, but you will smell Ambroxan in the backdrop. The Sauvage DNA is ramp runs rampant through this fragrance, but it's not just bergamot and Ambroxan for the most part. You're going to get a little bit of a sweeter nuance to this without it being a very sweet fragrance, but the Olibanum here plays a really strong role. It's really about the creamy woods, a little bit of aromatic still because it's an aromatic fragrance in every concentration. And like I said, the Olibanum really shines here. Performance is great in longevity, not super loud, but does have a pretty good sillage. The trail is the magic in this fragrance. Definitely some really good stuff. I love wearing this one. During the day with Sauvage Parfum. You now I got the shower, it was time for a shave. So I went ahead and grabbed my Zaharoff Signature Citrine shave set as well as gave myself some sprays of the fragrance. It's, uh, it's one of those things that I just really, really enjoy. It's a great euphoric spa-like type of situation when you use these traditional shaving sets where you're lathering up a brush and you're using a nice double-edged safety razor, picking out your blade, because I have a variety of different brand blades and such a few different razors. It's a thing. Those of you that are into it, you totally understand where I'm coming from. And, the set that Gentleman's Nod made for Zaharoff with this citrine oil, I just absolutely love. It brings out the uh, this warm orange smell. The incense amber really pops from the base of this fragrance in the soap. And then you still get all that freshness from the aftershave splash. And of course, got to throw a few shots of the fragrance afterwards. So out the shower, just having a good old time with Zaharoff Signature Citrine. Moving into Monday, one of my personal favorite blues. More of a light blue, to be honest with you, but... It does the trick for me. I really love the way YSLY EDT smells. This is the original formulation, not the new 2022 version. Um, I have two bottles of the original form formulation. I bought the second bottle from Sephora on clearance for 39 bucks when they were getting rid of the old stock to make room for the new rendition. The thing that I like more about this one, well, I don't necessarily like this one more than the new version. They're both great in their own right. That one falls a little bit in between this version and the EDP. It's a little bit sweeter, a little, little bit more vanilla, whereas this is more about the aldehydes in the top. It comes across a bit more chemically synthetic for sure, but I really dig that the way it smells. It's like I said, the aldehydes with the apple, sage, ambergris combo that the DNA is known for. I just love this stuff. I get kind of average, slightly above average performance. It's not on the weaker side for me. I really enjoy this one. It's great for this time of year. Honestly, it can be worn year-round. Not really ideal for the cold weather, but spring, fall, it works just as well as the summer. I've really been enjoying this one. Didn't get a compliment this particular wearing, but more times than not when I wear this one, I tend to get a compliment from somebody because I go out and about pretty often. 
And it's always noteworthy when it does happen. It doesn't happen all the time, but this one more times than not, usually will pull in a nice random compliment. But this particular time it didn't. If you haven't tried this one yet, the new version is better. I don't know how easy it would be to get your hands on the old version, but uh, I sure enjoy it. During the day, YSLY EDT, the original formula. And then when I got the shower, we went another night with Zaharoff Signature Citrine. I actually did it for three, three nights this week. I'm on Sunday, Monday, and on Tuesday night. I decided to rock with this. Just been enjoying it. It's one of those things where, oh, God, it smells so good. Just lounging around, kicking back. It's, it's nice and enjoyable. The sillage in it is a little bit more on the personal side when you're not heating up. Uh, just kicking it in the AC like I've been wearing it for. It's not going to project like crazy. It's going to be a bit more subdued. But the CIs aren't, like I said, it's more of a personal experience when you're not heated up. And uh, I've been really enjoying that. It's been nice and really providing a nice aromatherapy, calming, relaxing type of feeling for me in the evening. So I just kept going back to it several nights in a row. Out the shower is a Haroff Signature Citrine. Moving into Tuesday, I just did a full review on this one. This is my personal favorite of this style scent profile talking about Creed Silver Mountain Water. I have several fragrances that smell like Creed Silver Mountain Water and this is similar but it definitely has its share of differences. We're talking about Zerzhoff Mephisto. Really been in digging this one. Um, I still have some sprays in my decant but I went ahead and started digging into the bottle. I love this stuff. Beautiful sharp citrus, bunch of soapy aromatics, a lot of lavender here. And then as it starts to settle into the heart, when the citrus calms down but definitely does not go away, you're going to get a nice dose of iris that offers more of a soapy tone with the way the iris comes off. It's definitely on the powdery side. Beautiful, clean musk. This is just fresh, clean, inviting, head-turning. This is a niche blue fragrance through and through. I call it that because it has the style and scent profile that would fall into the blue category for me, whereas Silver Mountain Water... More about that herbal fresh tea note. I wouldn't really consider that one a blue, more of a light blue style. Maybe fresh green type of fragrance in many ways. This one I actually kind of deem, not just because of the color of the bottle, this kind of falls into really more so that light blue category. But for me, I get slightly above average performance. And like I said, the scent, I just absolutely enjoy this one. Haven't gotten a compliment from anyone other than my wife with this one, though. Surprisingly, uh, Siage isn't monstrous or anything like that, but there's been opportunities. It just apparently has not compelled anyone to say anything, but hey, I could care less because I absolutely love smelling it on me. And at the end of the day, it's all that really matters. During the day, Zerge off Mephisto. Then we got the shower. This was day three in a row of Zaharoff Signature Citrine. You know, nothing special to say that I haven't said in the previous two segments for the previous two days. So we'll go ahead and move on to the following day. But out the shower three nights in a row, it's a hard off signature citrine. Moving into Wednesday, I rocked this one all day. I rocked it out the shower. It was my first two wearings of this fragrance. I finally got around to wearing Polo Blue Gold Blend. I've done some test sprays, but this was my first two full wearings and I actually ended up going ahead and doing a video. Um, I've done handful or so of test sprays to where I got really familiar with the scent but just one and two spray here and there on your arm versus your usual spray routine and going on about your day can be a different experience sometimes so I had to get some full wearings in before I do the review. Obviously can't just go off of test sprays but this is definitely in my opinion of course the definitive version of the DNA. Yes, the new Polo Blue Parfum is magnificent. I love the way it smells. <sighs> this one's a little bit better. You still get that melon type of smell. It provides that almost similar feel to the cucumber note in the EDT, but here it's a cantaloupe melon type of smell. Um, you do get the same aquatic tones, but the incense is what changes this one. It's got a smoky nuance from start to finish, and it really really enhances the character of this scent profile. It is gorgeous. Above average performer for me in longevity, not some monster in projection, kind of average stuff in projection, but this is beautiful. This is, like I said, the ultimate version. It does project a little bit better than the Parfum, lasts about as long as the Parfum for me. Um, I even like it more than Deep Blue, believe it or not, Polo Deep Blue, which Kind of was my favorite until this came along. I have yet to get a bottle of Polo Blue Parfum, the newest one. I had a decant that I went through. I think I got a couple of sprays left in there. 
But if you haven't gotten your nose on this one, you can find them in the 60 ish dollar, $70 range from discounters online. I picked this up on eBay. So they're still out there. They're still readily available. They're not crazy expensive. And in, like I said, in my personal opinion, this is the definitive version. Again, that's Polo Blue Gold Blend from Ralph Lauren. Moving into Thursday, speaking of Ralph Lauren, this is a brand new release. I would still kind of somewhat put this in the blue category, but it's much spicier than your average blue fragrance. Uh, the opening will kind of give you blue vibes, but not completely. And the projection kind of surprised me with this one. We're talking about the new Ralph's Club Parfum from Ralph Lauren. This, as you would expect, this higher oil concentration, it is going to sit close to the skin. It's going to ride close to the skin. I haven't gotten any feedback on Siage yet. It's only been two wearings. I wore it during the day and I wore it out the shower that evening. Uh, I've only done a first impressions on it so far. And the scent is gorgeous on it. It's got a little bit of that bubblegummy feel. It does smell like Ralph's Club, but it's much richer. It's got a little bit of a smoky nuance, even though that's not really in the notes. I'm attributing it to the vetiver being a little bit earthy. It's still very woody, but it's very spicy. The most that you'll smell from it is spice. A lot of this cardamom note that's in there really jumps out at me. Even makes it a touch powdery, not really powdery fragrance just a little touch of it but it does offer a little bit of this sweet spice sweet and warm spicy feel to the fragrance it definitely comes across like i said as a more spicy blue fragrance style even though there isn't at least in the note breakdown the website shows main notes i'm sure that's not all notes that are in here but it doesn't show any ambroxan amber wood synthetic ambergris um isoe super anything like that so Yes and no. I classify it somewhere in the realm of blue. It will come across like a blue because the original, I definitely classify that as a blue fragrance. It smells like your typical blue, full of aromatics and woods. Same thing here, just with additional spice. And like I said, a little smoky touch in there. There's, I think there's something they're not telling us in this note breakdown because on my skin, there's a little bit of a smoky touch. But it does smell really good. But if you're looking, project, looking for projection... This ain't it in my experience so far. Uh, after an hour, it does sit a lot closer to the skin, but what it does do is stay consistent from that point on. It stays for a long ass time. Eight hours was what I clocked it to before I took a shower. More testing to come, more full wearings to come, and I will eventually do a comparison video to the original to see if this one's even worth spending the extra cash on versus the original, because where I'm standing right now, maybe not worth getting over the original but yet to be determined all day long, the new Ralph's Club Parfum. Moving into Friday, this is that rather unique fragrance I was speaking of in the beginning of the video that, I don't know, I was just in the mood to wear it. I have not wore it in a long time. I personally have a small collection, larger than I'm giving credit for actually, I think, of Masculine Rose fragrances, and Moschino Toy Boy is definitely one of the better ones in the collection. That crazy teddy bear looking bottle. It's a beautiful, fresh and bright watery Turkish rose type of smell, but it does get much more fresh and spicy as it settles in. It's kind of a spicy rose fragrance overall is the simplest way to put it, but not warm and spicy, not dark. I forgot what other floral is in there. There's a strange floral that provides almost like an inky type of feel, a little bit of a darker nuance, but like I said, not a dark fragrance. It's very enigmatic. It's very flamboyant and, and it's very charismatic as well. This will draw you in because it's a little bit on the unique side. This is a polarizing fragrance that isn't necessarily for everyone and it is on the stronger side in the sillage. Projection's pretty heavy early on as well. You gotta be mindful of the sprays. You can overspray this one and not realize it. Even going into the five to seven spray range, which is kind of my standard for most, is actually a little bit on the heavy side with this fragrance. But I love the way it smells. I just haven't worn it in a while. I don't know what made it pop in my head. I was in the mood for it. This one I actually did get a compliment at the neighborhood market Walmart that I had went to in the drink aisle. Specifically, I was grabbing some more Diet Dr. Peppers. Love my Diet Dr. Peppers. It's always nice to get a nice compliment, you know. Um, and this one definitely pulled one. One of the few compliments I got from this particular rotation. I bring this up because these are fragrances that tend to get some positive reaction most of the time. And like I said, this was one of the few random compliments that I got from a fragrance this week 
outside of my wife. My wife loves the way this smells on me. Um, she's never tried it herself. I do think this can be very unisex. It is rose-based, uh, but it does lean a little bit on the masculine side with some of the spices and stuff, like I was speaking of earlier, but great fragrance. Doesn't get talked about too much anymore. During the day, Moschino Toy Boy. Then we got the shower, one of my recent rack store pickups, basically a more floral version of Chrome. We're talking about Deauville Blue. A cheap $12 fragrance. Kind of just randomly been in the mood for it and might as well spray it on now. It's gonna be my scent out the shower tonight as well. Um, love the way it smells. Really dead ringer for Chrome. Like I said, just has a little bit of a floral tone to it. According to the notes that I saw, it's only got lavender as the only floral tone, but it does smell like a little bit of a white floral hit, like some jasmine or something like that being in there. Could be wrong. It just comes across as very floral to me, but it's still that metallic citrus shower gel type of smell that Azaro Chrome is. It's basically, like I said, a cheaper dead ringer for Azaro Chrome that doesn't perform quite as well, but actually, surprisingly, is no slouch. Out the shower, Deauville Blue from Michael Germain. Finally, on Saturday, my absolute favorite, 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 favorite clone of any version of Baccarat Rouge 540, Al Haramine Amber Oud Rouge. Now, I've had a lot of people in the video that came out this morning at the recording of this, in regards to clone fragrances, it was featured asking me, how close is it to Ruby? I don't know. I've never tried Ruby. I noticed they did add the almond note that's in the extrait to Ruby. Um, I'm not the person to ask. I've never tried it because I have this. So I have no urge, necessity, or reason of any kind to want to reach out and find Ruby. Uh, because anytime I just want to wear Baccarat Rouge 540, I just grab this bottle. It's such a good representation of the x straight for me. I love it. I only did five sprays today. It was more than enough. My sillage was gorgeous. was gorgeous. I was loving the strong wafts I was getting throughout my day today. I love the way this stuff smells. I can't, I can't say enough. It's what stops me from securing a bottle of Baccarat Rouge 540 x straight. The better experience is definitely the original. The quality is not the same, but this suffices. I do just fine with this. It, Like I said, it stops me from spending the money on that 75 ml. I mean 70 ml, because for 70 ml, the R540 x straight is super expensive. <laughs> There's no denying that. Don't get me wrong, if you got the money to spend, it's the way to go. The original is always the way to go over these clones. But if you're on a budget, like I am most of the time, this does just fine. During the day, was loving Amber Oud Rouge from Al Haramine. And then, as you saw a moment ago, I just made the sprays tonight out the shower on Saturday. Just gave myself three sprays of Deauville Blue, which is more than enough. I'm just lounging around. I'm going to be editing this video shortly after I record, so I'm just going to be chilling. I don't need more sprays than that, and I'm good to go. Out the shower, Deauville Blue. Well, that was this week's rotation, and until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. What you guys wear this week? You know, that's my favorite comments to read every week on the channel. This is my favorite format to do. I've been doing it for 140 weeks straight at this point. It's almost at the three-year straight mark of consistent weekly rotation videos. I didn't originate this format. Um... So I can't take that credit, but I'm definitely the one that's done it the most. No denying that. I've definitely done the most weekly rotation videos. Uh, anytime you want to check it, you just TLTG weekly rotation and put a number in. From 1 to currently 140. That's crazy to think about. It really is. We're approaching three years of this. I appreciate all you guys that watch this video on a weekly basis, or even if you just watch one once in a blue moon, or if this is your very first weekly rotation video on this channel. Hope you subscribe, hope you like what you see. Make sure to turn that notification bell on for sure. Oh, and give it a good thumbs up. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the fragrances I wore in this past rotation and you give them a spray now, pretty confident you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys.